The Ghana Investment Promotion Center registered over three billion US dollars worth of investments in 2012, and the country is nursing bold ambitions to position Ghana not just as a destination to do business, but as the hub for business for West Africa. The Ghana Investment Promotion Center has now embarked on a roadshow to drum up investment with a visit to South Africa. CEO Mawena Treba joins us now here in studio. Mawena, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks what brings you to South Africa? Well, I think there's a clear acknowledgement that Ghana and South Africa have a long-standing history, not just political, uh, but certainly from a commercial perspective. We're, we're very excited about the experiences that South mm. Africa has had uh, on the side of growing and developing business in support of development. And we're looking forward to pushing a pan-African initiative for collaborations mm -hmm. between Ghanaian business people and the South African business community. And that's my intention while I'm here. We know that um, according to the World Investment Reports that Ghana is currently ranked seventh in terms of attracting uh, foreign direct investment. Yes. What is driving uh, FDI into Ghana? Well, I think it's a couple of things, Nazipo. First and foremost, we're taking a very strategic view of investment opportunities. Um, mm -hmm. uh, as we've moved into middle income status, the focus yeah. is now on strategic investors who can support a long-term development agenda. And so right. uh, we're seeking opportunities in specific areas of focus mm -hmm. um, to really create tangible results uh, that come from the investment opportunities, but also ensure that the investor has the right sort of experience. And so right. we're looking very much at creating legislative and regulatory framework that engenders that. And there's a lot of open discussion about our law around investment promotion. It's currently under review. Right. And those are things that I think that the investing community globally and indeed mm -hmm. in country are looking at and it's creating a lot of excitement and buzz around Ghana. Of course, I have to ask you, what are your priority uh, sectors? Which are the fastest growing industries in Ghana as we speak? Well, it's obviously, I mean, with the recent oil and gas fine, yeah. there's a lot of focus on, on investments in infrastructure around the oil and gas sector. Uh, but there's also a quite a great deal of interest um, in the agribusiness sector. Right. Um, um, clearly, you know, for an economy that's trying to grow and develop its agrarian side of business mm -hmm. opportunities, uh, the agribusiness sector pr pr presents great opportunities. Um, there's obviously also the hospitality sector where we believe certainly South Africa has a lot, an, an excellent story to tell and mm -hmm. potentially very strong partnership opportunities. So the hospitality sector, because as you rightly said, Ghana's really been positioned as a hub for commercial activity and access to the rest of the West African region, sub-region. Um, we're looking at the hospitality industry to really build up uh, the service sector that's required to, to engender the experience that I keep talking about right. for invest, the investing community. Let's zoom into the sub-region sub as you speak. I mean, to a large extent, uh, many analysts will say that Ghana has been overshadowed uh, by Nigeria as an economic powerhouse. Yeah. Uh, what are you doing to come out of this shadow? Well, I, I always say that it's not really always about size. Yeah. It, it's about the quality of the experience that you have, the speed with which you're able to respond to the investor's requests, um, information requirements so that they can make an informed decision. And in as much as we perhaps we may not be able to compete in terms of population size, mm. in terms of credibility and the legislation that works, uh, those are things that Ghana can speak to. The stability of our democratic process of over the years, uh, we remain unmatched in our sub-region in mm -hmm. respect of transition from one political ideology to the, no to the next. Uh, our ability to develop our financial services institutions uh, creates sophistication that also gives comfort to the investor. Right. Um, access to power, access to land, those things that are really important for the investor. Creating that experience, letting them know that the Investment Promotion Center is there to hold their hands, walk them through the process, particularly mm -hmm. for the strategic investors. This is really what's driving all of the buzz around Ghana, and we're, we're quite excited about it. And so when we look at Ghana's ability uh, to act as a, a gateway yes. uh, in, in, into the broader region, um, what, are the, what are the big avenues that you think that uh, you know, give Ghana that competitive advantage um, amongst the other West African states? Well, I mean, I, I think, first of all, we have to acknowledge the history that Ghana has had yeah. in, in terms of, of, of its stature 
within mm -hmm. the sub-region and I think the continent um, gaining independence first, mm -hmm. um, having the opportunity to take a broad view of what it is we want now as a yeah. country, um, making an informed decision that it's not every investment that necessarily will translate into development and therefore mm -hmm. how do we look at our legislation, revise it, have open public discussion that informs the way we treat investors when they come into mm -hmm. the country, how we apply benefits and incentives over right. time and understand what accrues back to the country. Um, the, the, the shift is, cl is clear. And I think that because we appreciate as a country, and I think this really goes for the continent, that we're really beginning to negotiate from a position of strength. Nowhere else is anyone going to experience the level of economic growth that right. is being experienced on the African continent. Yeah. And Ghana has an exciting story to tell. And so these are some of the, the indicators that are going to allow us to continue to have those conversations mm -hmm. with the international investing community, but just as importantly, the, go the Ghanaian domestic business community and yeah. showcasing those mm -hmm. big success stories because there are incredible Ghanaian business professionals who are known across the yeah. continent. Um, uh, one individual I can quickly mention is Dr. Sam Jonah, who's well known yeah. in South African business circles. Um, there are so many people like him in country. And so our ability to showcase these business success stories and demonstrate that they're credible business partners and business opportunities in, in the country are really what's driving that. And if we look at your, the corporate tax uh, system in Ghana, how is this positioned so that it uh, continues to be an incentive uh, uh, towards for investors uh, inward looking into Ghana? Well, I think that the investing community recognizes obviously that um, government and, and, and our legislative instruments are now focused on ensuring that we're able to demonstrate that even as we do apply mm -hmm. tax expectations yeah. behind investments, uh, there are opportunities to look at waivers that allow you it to make it easier for you to make that investment yeah. um, over a five year period, for instance, you can anticipate certain waivers in respect of importation of certain machinery. It really depends on, obviously, the kind of investment you're considering. Um, but the tax regime is there mm -hmm. not only to make sure that you have the right experience and you're able to facilitate your investment opportunity, but also that government can just demonstrate that at the end of that five-year tax waiver period, um, there are development initiatives, there are jobs that have been created, and those are the things that I think are giving the investor comfort because they feel like there is an opportunity for win-win. Mm -hmm. um, I can see what the internal rate of return is going to be on this business investment, yeah. and the country can also see the returns in, in terms of new economic activity and new opportunities for, for job creation, etc. Often a, a tricky card for investors is the, is the question of empowerment, and we've yes. seen how this has played out in South Africa, and we've seen how it's played out uh, in Zimbabwe as well. Yes. Where is Ghana in terms of the uh, maturation, the maturity of its uh, empowerment policy and what should investors expect? Well, I think this is an exciting subject because we've, again, had an opportunity to look at how the, those experiences have occurred in other places on the continent. Uh, for us um, in Ghana, I think the important thing is to demonstrate that we do have the capacity and the skill sets in country, mm -hmm. um, that as we work with investors, uh, there is an opportunity to look at conversations between the private sector and academia. Mm -hmm. So it's no, not necessarily a question of not having the resources in country because everybody wants to manage their business yeah. at a reasonable cost. And so having those conversations to agree on what's required in terms of human resource skill sets is one of the things that supported a lot of, of investors to say, look, there are strong Ghanaian technical capabilities, whether it be oil and gas, whether it be agribusiness, etc. And again, these are encouraging the sort of investments that we're seeing mm -hmm. as we continue to see that upward incline in, in terms of our FDIs.